Professor Jaime Gutierrez, a passionate collector of out-of-place artifacts, has accumulated a fascinating array of puzzling pieces. We have previously covered the work of Klaus Dona, who originally brought these to our attention. He is responsible for publicizing a lot of these fascinating objects, with our favorite being the Nomoli figurines, one of which dated at a minimum of 12,500 years, which was created containing a metallic ball of advanced metallurgy, unquestionably of a tremendous age, yet also of advanced origin. Yet I digress. Among Professor Gutierrez's collection is the infamous gene disc made of lidite and featuring the entire birth cycle of the human female, even depicting microscopic events such as cell division, along with a few other select species. How the creators acquired this impressive in-depth knowledge of biology remains a complete mystery. Furthermore, and equally as compelling, are the surgical instruments, also made from lidite, yet carved with such precision, modern research has revealed not only that they are perfectly balanced, but that each fits perfectly within the human hand, some rivaling and in certain areas actually superior to modern technology, with them now being slowly adapted into modern medicine, particularly the birthing tools. This knife, for example. On the top of the handle, you have the mother's head and then the child's head, with the umbilical cord around the neck of the child ingeniously signifying what the tool be used for. With this piece, illustrating that it be used to aid the child in leaving the birth canal during complications. On the reverse of the instrument are two perfectly placed grooves for the thumb and finger, indicating that if used correctly, it will not allow the introduction of any unrequired force during procedures. This is incredibly an advance on modern medical instruments, as the tool has been found to actually be a safer option during labor. Along with these, he also has an array of other surgical instruments, ranging in delicacy and size, yet all made of lidite to a precision which still escapes our capabilities. So, who made these medical artifacts? Or indeed, the gene disc, along with the many other curious lidite artifacts within Professor Gutierrez Ancient's collection? Were they left by a lost, yet clearly advanced civilization? We find the possibility highly compelling. So that means this knife could have been used to cut the umbilical cord, saving the child's life. Or could it have been used for ceremonial sacrifices? <laughs> well, I guess we'll never know, will we? Hey, I made that last part up. Hey guys, so today I wanted to share with you a rather special out-of-place artifact. It's known as the Fisher Canyon footprint, and it's actually a lump of coal. However, this small lump of coal is something very special. It's an artifact we hold dear to our hearts here at Mystery History. Since its discovery in the early 1900s by a man named John T. Reed, a character we have actually covered in the past, it has been silencing skeptics and evolutionists the world over. John T. Reed was the man responsible for confirming native Indian legends of a race of red-headed giants that once terrorized the American continent some 13,000 years ago. When John found the Fisher Canyon footprint, he reported it to the New York Sunday American. The coal layer in which the fossil was found was dated at over 15 million years ago. Microscopic photography that was carried out by the Rockefeller Institute, presumably attempting to discredit the find, actually confirmed that it was indeed a heel print of a hand-stitched shoe, and that the fossil seemed to show the presence of two rows of stitches along the edge of the sole with twists of thread clearly visible in the photography. The right side of the shoe also appeared more worn than the left, indicating that it was worn on the right foot. Crystals of mercury sulfide, collected during the analysis, only confirmed the fossilized shoe print's enormous age. After the test results were in, Samuel Hubbard of the Museum of Archaeology in Oakland, California, buckled to the sheer amount of conclusive evidence by telling the press, quote, Today's people are not yet able to make this kind of shoe. Facing this kind of evidence indicates that at the time of suspected uncivilized arthropods, millions of years ago people with high intelligence appear to have existed. Detail of the threads proves that it was the sole of a shoe and was strictly the handiwork of man." End quote. This is why we love the Fisher Canyon footprint so much. It sat in the back of museum collections for years, silently waiting for evolutionists and skeptics alike to stumble upon its existence 
only for it to then cast its spell of tremendous doubt upon their way of thinking. They can produce no real explanation for it. The best any mainstream scientists or anthropologists can do is ignore the evidence and conclude it's just a natural formation. Unfortunately, the footprint conveniently went missing a few years ago, even though by all accounts it was just a lump of coal. The story has also been hijacked over the years, with the Rockefeller Institute's test results subsequently vanishing. However, luckily for us, the quotes by Hubbard are in press archives all over the world. This small lump of coal is sure to fuel the argument for years to come. One of the more obscure and personal favorite oo-parts of mystery history is a small yet incredibly special unique figurine. Dated to the Stone Age, yet regardless of this extraordinary antiquity, this hollow figurine remaining unopened and unbroken for so long, interestingly, rattled. After a delicate extraction procedure was undertaken, a metallic ball was found inside. A sphere, which due to the aforementioned age of said Upart, should simply not exist. Yet, after further research, we have discovered that this unique figure wasn't a singular anomaly as we first presumed, but was actually part of a collection of equally puzzling artifacts, some of equally unexplainable characteristics. We now know it was found amongst a collection by locals mining for gold in Sierra Leone. They are now known as the anomaly figures. The statues are now attributed to a number of varying legends in Sierra Leone. Dating from 17,000 BC, some believe that angels who once lived in the heavens were, as a punishment for causing bad behavior, turned into humans and sent to Earth. A legend uncannily similar of certain fallen angel theories. The anomaly figures are thusly thought to serve as representations of those entities and were cast as a reminder of how they were banished from the heavens to Earth to live as humans. There are many strange hybrid interpretations within the collection. It includes animals such as monkeys, elephants, lizards, among other curiosities, some also depicted as giants. Quote, While the figures are varied in shape and time, they are uniform in appearance, indicative of a common purpose. That purpose remains unknown, however. The figures were part of a Temni culture and tradition, but that, upon invasion by the Mendi, the tradition was lost and the civilization displaced to other locations. With so many questions and uncertainties, it is unknown if we will ever have definitive answers as to the dating, origins, and purpose of the anomaly figures. For now, they remain a magnificent representation of the ancient civilizations that preceded those that now live in Sierra Leone." End quote. Asserted curator Frederick Lamp. We find the entire collection, especially our previously covered Upart's metallic sphere, highly compelling. Quote, Here we have some kind of animal. It looks like a dinosaur. When Professor Petoni found this statue, it was reportedly making a strange noise. So, upon further investigation, which involved a circular incision into the statue's stone, it was found to contain a small black ball. You can see this mysterious object resting within the opening. After further research surrounding this artifact, the professor informed me that somehow somebody must have performed a practical joke on them. When asked why, he replied, because the result of the research shows that this metal material is in fact, amazingly, chrome steel. However, as far as modern man is aware, chrome steel was only discovered for the first time during the beginning of the 20th century within Austria. That means it should have been impossible to have found some inside a statue with an astonishing estimated age of approximately 17,000 years. Professor Petoni was laughing in disbelief. He said, if a statue is making a strange sound, I do not open it right away. I also first performed several x-rays prior to his research. And clearly, within this still complete closed statue, is this unexplainable round chrome ball, 
proof the sphere was in existence before more detailed exploration was undertaken. End quote. That was an excerpt from one of Klaus Dona's many press interviews, specifically pertaining to one of the many seemingly impossible ancient out-of-place artifacts he so often covers within his work. Intriguingly, along with this detailed description of unfolding events surrounding their research of this unquestionably perplexing item, Professor Petoni side-noted that during his examinations of the object's outer shell, he also noticed that at some time within its long life, undoubtedly within antiquity, it had previously been expertly opened, presumably during a similar operation. Then, at some later date, and for some currently unknown reason, almost perfectly resealed. Was this task undertaken by a later advanced civilization? A group of individuals who also uncovered this artifact's inexplicable features. Possibly a lost civilization's ancient museum exhibit? Could it possibly be far older than the 17,000-year aging it is currently assigned with? It is undoubtedly highly compelling.